My name is Brian Kelsey, and I decided to build a late-night talk show set in my suburban garage and challenge myself to see who the most famous of people I could get to stop by. I run all the cameras and equipment myself and, and just hope that nothing goes wrong. This is 10 Minutes With. Welcome to the show. My name is Brian Kelsey. That, of course, as always, is Pete Schifo. Pete, first of all, uh, do, I, do I have to keep coming through the garage? Okay, so... Do, do I live here? <laughs> it's not... Can we? Can I come through the curtain or That's something? That's a good point. Uh, this has been a crazy year, Pete. Uh, we've got, of course, insane pandemic going on, the election, which is crazy. But you know what? Amidst it all, there's been a little glimmer of hope, a little ray of sunshine coming out of Lincoln, Nebraska. And I know... You've seen this tape, Pete. So recently, uh, these tapes have emerged of a lovely woman who is interviewing celebrities. This is back from the 70s and 80s. And uh, they're hilarious interviews. They're like, she, for that time, that's 40 years ago, just bold, brash, uh, just, she had just balls. Um, and so anyway, so somebody put together a, a compilation of the best of and put it on Twitter. And the, the thing went, went viral, like 8 million views. Take a look. Let's let her rip this morning. You got to work with Burton, Richard Burton yes. and the Tempest. Yes, I did. And now he's dead. Oh, yes. Do you know who his dad is? His dad, you watch Bonanza, I'm sure you watch the reruns of Bonanza. Who's the sheriff on Bonanza, Bing Russell? Is he still alive, Kurt? You've done some brilliant pictures, you've done some stinkers. Really? What happened to Heaven's Gate, Sam? What happened to Bosom Buddies? We were canceled. <laughs> did you see the movie Raiders of the Lost Dark? Have you seen it yet? Yes, I did. It's a know, wonderful movie. Do you know that he turned down the role of no, India? I, I heard that you turned down the role, that you were offered the role. I wouldn't turn it down. Do you have any regrets about not going into the series for MASH? No. No? They've all made a fortune, Elliot. Then that little movie you did with him, Wild River, what was one of his few flops. He, look, he looks evil in many ways. Um, can the camera come in and take a, a close-up? Look at these eyes. Have you ever seen eyes like this? If you look at them real closely, what do you see? Look at, look at, look. Do you see that ring around the outer edge of the eye? What, what, what is that? I don't know. It's an <laughs> old family trait. My father had those. It's a ring around my moon. <laughs> well, this makes a most fascinating look. You really look terrific. Thank you. Are you into yoga or exercising? No, I, or I exercise. Right? Uh, you might just whip one out. I might just, I might <laughs> no, just whip one out. There I am. Listen, you don't know to whom you are speaking because you and I go back a few years. But you weren't a model. No. What size are you? Um. Tom. How do you kiss underwater without bubbles coming out of your nose and mouth? Let me ask you, how would you feel as a mother if your daughter were involved with your former love personally? How, how would you react to something like that? You know how invaluable your voice has been to you over the years? No, baby, tell me. Perfect. Oh, God. I mean, oh. <laughs> we can we do that? Look? You're a new father. Can yeah. we do that? Can we? Of course we can. We can? It was Let's based try it again, because that was on the left side. Mm, it works, yeah. it works, it works. You don't consider yourself a great actor, do you? <laughs> so the guy who made that tape, his name is John Frankensteiner. Is that his real name? Um, anyway, he put it together, and the woman's name is Lita Powell Drake. And we thought it would be great to, uh, to interview her. Now, she's like the hottest thing now. I mean, she's been in, like, Variety magazine and all these different interviews, but I don't think anyone's ever actually interviewed her in person. So I think we're... The first one, although we're, are we doing it? Are we doing via satellite? <laughs> do we do have a satellite dish in the backyard? So that's coming up, and we're excited about that. It's going to be great. Uh, in the meantime, though, you know, occasionally, you know, there are guests who we invite on the show that, for one reason or another, Pete, they just uh, they're not interested in joining us here on the program in my gross garage with no heat. Uh, we like to celebrate these little misfortunes with a segment we like to call electronic mail rejection letters. <laughs> Electronic mail rejection letters. I believe they call it email now. Is that the proper nomenclature? Uh, rejection letter number one. Dear Mr. Kelsey, Ron is respectfully passing, but thank you for thinking of him. Best Catherine. Catherine? 
Now that's the kind of response you'd expect from Ron Howard. He's, you know, he's Opie, he's so nice. So no, no Ron Howard for now at least. Rejection letter number two. John is on hiatus, so best to go through his agents with this request. Thanks. And I did, and no response. Is hiatus mean what? Or they get fat and they don't want to be on TV and, or something? I'm always on hiatus. Rejection letter number three, Brian. Thank you for interest in Jerry Seinfeld. I'm unable to add more interviews to Jerry's schedule at this time, but would you like a copy of the book to talk about on your show? Best, Julia. And he, they did send it to us. Is this anything? Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> By the way, is it... Is Julia, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, is she doing his, uh, <laughs> his email now? <laughs> Tough times for everybody. My guest today had the distinction of breaking the internet two weeks ago when a compilation video of her celebrity interviews went viral. With an interview style that's been described as having the charm of Mary Hart, the enthusiasm of Jiminy Glick, and the bluntness of Mike Wallace, it's no surprise that over 8 million people have watched the video. Her amazing career of 59 years and counting spans the history of television itself. She made her start in 1956 as the Bingo Girl on a live bingo television show in Duluth, Minnesota. Pete, I did the same thing. What are the chances of that? For 15 years, she was a host of KLON Nebraska's Cartoon Corral, where she created the beloved character Calamity Kate. She went on to produce and host the morning show for 25 years, where she interviewed a who's who of movie and TV stars, including Tom Hanks, Jack Lemmon, and Bob Hope. Thank you very much. You've done just about everything. <laughs> Haven't you? <laughs> Let's keep it in show business. <laughs> She's in the Nebraska Broadcasters Hall of Fame and currently hosts and produces Live and Learn in Lincoln, Nebraska. Please welcome the woman that Johnny Carson dubbed Lita of Lincoln, Lita Powell Drake. Look at you. How did you find me? Well, first of all, do you know what I had to do to find you? I had to, I went, I searched all over. The only way I could get to you was through the Nebraska Historical Society. I reached out to there. <laughs> they gave me your contact, and I find, so I'm really glad uh, that that uh, we we have you on. You look great. How you doing? Well, I'm not dead, and that's a good thing. But let me tell you about the Nebraska Historical Society because they're at the root of all this. Well, uh, because I, I worked for a local television station, KOLN KGI and Television, here in Lincoln, Nebraska, for many years, hosting the morning show for an hour. Remember, everything was live then in those days, and the kids show in the afternoon, and um, and then those of us who who were had had um, well, what, what should I call it? Uh, had television shows across the United States. This was for CBS. We were invited to usually New York City or or Las Vegas or California to interview the stars. So we would do like a 14-minute interview, and the poor the poor stars, you know, because they went from room to room to room to room for days. And so we brought them home, and and I put them on my morning show. You know, and, and these were the, you know, the big stars, it was a big deal. And they ran, I had like 300, 300 interviews. And so we ran them and ran them, and finally that was the end of that. So I took them home. Now they were, remember, these were three quarter inch tapes. And so I put them in a the closet. And then years went by and I looked at the closet and said, what the heck am I gonna do with this stuff? I don't wanna throw it away. So I went to the Nebraska History Museum, and then they put it on YouTube. And once it got on YouTube, it went viral. I mean, over 8 million people have watched those goofy little interviews. So this is 40 years ago, and, and, and during that time, so it was a different world for women in broadcasting. So um, it was a boys club, and here you are, you know, doing these great interviews with, you know, probably mostly men in your workplace. How was that dynamic and what was that like? Oh, it was all, all the guys did everything. You know, I mean, the guys with the camera people and, and they, they did it all. It was the girls and we never got paid as much as the guys did, uh, you know, for, for the television shows. But I, I, I was having such a great time, even though I got lousy pay, I was having fun and met a lot of people and got to go places. So it, it was worth it. Absolutely. And then I wound up at Nebraska Public Television. Wait a minute, I gotta show you. Okay, Nebraska All right. TV. Right. Yeah, and I programmed the network there for, for Nebraska TV. <laughs> yeah, well, how, so what do you make of all this, this resurgence? I am overwhelmed because what I'm getting now is, uh, and I don't know if my computer can handle all this, 
People from all over the world now want to be my friend. <laughs> well, that's the thing. A lot of um, stars are are um, are giving you accolades. I'm just there's a couple here. Tom Arnold tweeted. This is so good. Lita Powell Drake gets away with asking the stars the questions every fan wants to ask. Were you were you asking from a fan's point of view? Because some of them were very, you know, different questions. Well, maybe so. I watch television a lot because I was a part of it, and so I, you know, I, I think that we're glad that they you knew something about their show. Like I want to know something about your show. Well, so and yeah. you, in fact, you tell uh, you want to tell people here now, now and uh, here and now. Where to find you? How can they find you? People from Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay, you can go to 10minuteswith.com. Oh, okay, because see, I've one? run into you, and I didn't know where or why or how, but I, I, I listened to you, and I thought it was kind of fun. And then I thought, gee, it must be cold in that garage when it gets winter. I got worried about you. Well, <laughs> but I didn't know where to go to find you. Well, but yeah, I it, wanted to know about your garage. Oh, this? I mean, aren't you cold in your garage? Well, it's a little chilly. You know, I built the whole set myself. Uh, you are de a designer. There's no question about that. Well, uh, but I uh, want to know about the warmth. And where do you park your car? Well, that's sort of the problem. I uh, can't park it in here anymore. Um, <laughs> and in fact, there's a, I'm looking right now. Pete's standing amongst the, you know, the fire starter and, and generator and gasoline back there. So it's a little... So now, you got a Tele Award. Tell us about that. What was that for? Well... Oh, darn it. I don't have it. Pete, would you go get it? It's right in my office. Right around, right on the corner. Now, let, let me just, uh, let me just, hi, let me, hi, yes, that's hi, Pete. Hi. Oh, he's wearing his mask. Good for you. Oh, yeah, here it is. Here you go. Oh, so many people to thank. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just put it right here. Well, now listen, you deserve some trophies. Now, I, you know, you were doing, first of all, you were a single mom. You were programming and hosting and producing the morning show. And then in the afternoon, you'd go do what you're actually you're really most famous for is, is Calamity Kate is the kids show. How did you juggle all of that? Craziness. <laughs> I mean, I, I liked it. First of all, it was a lot of fun. It was a heck of a lot of work because I did have to get up very early in the morning and I produced the show. I hosted and produced it and wrote all the stuff. So it kept me out of trouble. <laughs> I have never been in jail. <laughs> so now, what are you up to now? You mean my weight or my height? Well, both. Your okay. work. Uh, I am, I'm with now Ollie, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. Mr. Osher was a gazillionaire who lived out in California. I think he's still alive because he was in. He was late. He was a well, very, very, very wealthy man, and he offered universities across the United States if they would put together classes for seniors, people age 50 and older. And we, I got involved with that right from the very beginning. I have the classes too. I'm the facilitator put together classes, like for the Johnny Carson School of Theater and Film. So I just come up with classes that I'm interested in so I can learn some more. Well, you know, Lita, I'm 51, so I think I qualify for... Uh... Yes. Oh, and they love to have oh, you. Geez. Why don't... That's an idea. <laughs> Remind me of Johnny Carson. Tell our viewers the story of how you actually met Johnny Carson, because it's, it's pretty funny. It involves some striped pants, I believe. I went to the Men's Fashion Association, and uh, this was in New York City. And of course, uh, this, is for, this was for the press. And, uh, and I knew that he was going to be there, and I wanted to get a picture of him. So I did not dress like everybody else. I dressed almost like I am today. I wore my... <laughs> my football, my football outfit. <laughs> so I could be a corn husker. <laughs> and I think people were saying, who is that person back there dressed like that? And so, and Johnny said, who is she? And somebody said, that's Lita Powell Drake. And so uh, Johnny said, Lita, Lita, Lita Powell Drake, where are you? So I stood up on my table and I said, I'm here, Johnny. You know what I look like. You used to be in Lincoln, Nebraska. He says, but look at the way you're dressed. And I said, yeah, that's why you left Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think about heading to New York and, and, and coming out here? Yeah, yes. But now I had television shows. I had a child, you know, and that makes all the difference in the world. And so I thought, well, I guess I don't, won't be going to New York. So I'm here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and, and really happy that I did stay. It's a wonderful, wonderful state. 
Oh, like Lita, I have two final questions and I'll let you go. Who are we dating? The dating? Yeah. <laughs> I'm too, too old. Nobody wants me. And besides, I'm not interested. <laughs> well, no, Pete's been uh... And I'm having a wonderful time. I, I don't need some guy to make demands on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, final question. I need to know. So what, can you give me one good piece of advice for conducting a really good interview? Do your homework first. Know who that person is. Homework. Get as much information as you can and then hit them with it gently. That is a perfect way to end this. Lita of Lincoln, uh, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. Her show, Live and Learn, airs on 575 TV. Her book, The Calamities of Calamity Kate, is available on Amazon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brian, Kelsey, BK. Thank you, Pete, and thank you guys, and we'll talk to you next time.